So this machine here um, is the Tandy Radio Shack. Well, I should say Radio Shack, really. Not us. We had Tandy. Um, America had Radio Shack. Um, so this is a Radio Shack TRS-80, or as some very rude people say, the Trash 80. Where's the 80 come from? Is that the processor? Um, I'm not entirely sure. It might be just 80 characters across the screen, actually. Probably. Um, not sure where the 80 comes from. But, um, but yeah, it, it's, it was a good machine. It was an early machine as well. The machine itself was available sort of from 1977, I think. Um, and it was available to buy from um, Radio Shack stores over in the States. Over here, it was the Tandy shop. Was it branded as a Tandy machine over here? Was it a ra still a Radio Shack? I think it was still a Radio Shack machine. TRS is Tandy Radio Shack. Um, so um, uh, it's, it was just the same machine uh, on both sides of the pond. I have to confess that I not really know much about this machine. Over here, I remember Sinclair, obviously, when we had Commodore machines and we had Acorn machines. Was it not as big over here? Was it big in the States? It did okay over here, but yeah, it's fair to say it wasn't as big as the Acorn and Sinclair, that kind of stuff. Um, it was only sold by Tandy, so you had to go into one of their stores to, to go and buy one. Um, but nevertheless, I think they did sell pretty well and lots of people had them and we get donated them you know, fairly regularly. And they were a capable machine. I think probably they had a little bit more of a, a lean towards business or home business, people that wanted to balance their checkbook and that kind of stuff. Um, but there were you know, some, some good games written for them as well. It does feature in the Ready Player One. We're doing a one or two videos about Ready Player One. What do we know about this machine itself? What's the processor? What, you know, is it running basic? What's its operating system, all that sort of thing? Yeah, so when you turn the machine on, just like any other sort of 80s computer or late 70s computer, it runs basic as the way of programming it. This one we've just turned on. First thing it does is ask you the memory size. So that was pretty standard in the early basics. Um, they didn't sort of automatically detect the memory to use, um, they asked you how much. However, if you press enter, it would then just go and use all available memory. And now we are ready to type code. So standard stuff, don't want to disappoint anybody. Let's do um, ready player one, 20. You know what's coming next, go to 10. Absolutely bog standard, sort of basic in the machine. A lot of the time you would have bought one of these, not with a monitor, you would have bought just the machine itself. Um, monitors were quite a lot of money extra. So a lot of people couldn't afford that. Um, so you bought the machine, you'd plug it into a TV. We're lucky enough to have had a monitor donated, so it goes complete with that. Uh, just a mono display though, no colors. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was uh, a good machine, but I think probably slightly more leaning towards the more serious side of computing um, at that time. So by, by which we obviously mean not very many games for it. Uh, there are not that many games for it. I mean, that, that is the literal good definition of leaning towards business is there aren't many games for this machine. Move along, kids. You, you, you can read that however you want. I'm just saying it was, it was more of a serious machine. Um, but, uh, but I mean, in all seriousness, there were different versions of this. So this is a Model 1, the most basic version of it. But you could then buy another one where it had a monitor built into it. So it was a nice curvy front to it. This was all in one. And it had two disk drives there. Um, you were paying a lot more money for it, but then you had a business machine, really. Um, and lots of packages were out there that helped you run your business and that kind of stuff. Um, were processing um, CPM. Based on Z80, you could run CPM on it um, and run those packages. The machine does feature in Ready Player One. But I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know in what way yet. I suspect that Ernest Klein, who wrote Ready Player One, perhaps had one of these himself because it's shown some fondness in the book. Yeah, you can pretty much guarantee that. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think he was playing adventure games on it and things like that. And he, he does talk about in the book having the, the shoebox full of games. Uh, that he brings out for it. So, so apparently there were some games, um, but maybe only written by him, I don't know. Let's go through the power-up sequence. So there's the beginning of adventure. Um, just a, a purple border with a number one in it. So to start any Atari game, you press the reset button. 20, you know what's coming next. Go to 10. Um, so you toggle in the data into the machine. So you've got the address bus there, um, you can set the address. Um, and then you've got your data, 